Hey guys, Forex here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a faulty Nintendo Entertainment System, more commonly known as the NES. Now this was sold as not powering on. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my power supply. I'll get the video cable. We'll look it up to this thing uh, and see what we get. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. All ready to test it. I put a game in a slot. Got my video hooked up through my Scott switcher. Got power going in there. Let's power on. See what we get, and we've got absolutely nothing, which is a bit strange, guys. I'd expect to see something, um, but we're getting nothing. Um, yeah, power supplies in there. Um, yeah, mine switched on at the prod. Yep, I'm switched on. There's the power is the power brick so yeah that's a strange one guys not getting anything um, okay let's get the lid off uh, and have a look inside see what we can see there's something loose uh, in this nest guys uh, when I turned it over to show you what screws to remove um, this is what I heard. Let's see if you can hear. I don't know whether you can hear that. There's something loose uh, inside the console, which is never a good sign. <laughs> so yeah, let's get in this thing now. To remove the top lid, there's six screws we need to remove. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here, there's one here, and the final one is here. Remove those screws, and I should be able to pull the top lid straight off. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> this is going to be the quickest diagnosis uh, in history when it comes to one of the videos on my channel. As um, soon as I took the lid off, guys, I could smell like a... Uh, how can I explain it? It, it? Unless you've smelt it before, you won't know what I mean. Um, a burnt up component. Um, that's the, the smell. I'm smelling something on here has uh, released its magic smoke. <laughs> and uh, you could probably already see it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that rattling inside uh, was uh, these little parts here. And uh, they came from the 7805 voltage regulator uh, if I tilt it up hopefully you can see that better and that thing <laughs> has gone thermal nuclear <laughs> holy <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> so uh, yeah <laughs> that's why there's no power <laughs> oh dear okay what I need to do now is get this uh, get this thing out uh, remove the voltage regulator and do some tests hope it hasn't um, taken out the actual motherboard but yeah that thing's <laughs> proper didn't like it did it like it's gone <laughs> let's get the main motherboard out now to do that there are a series of screws I need to remove there's one here there's one here Turn it to the side there's one here there's one here, turn it around again, there's one here, there's one here, there's one just down here, there's one next to the heat sink for the voltage regulator, there's one here, and the final one is here. Remove those, and then I'll be able to take out the actual shield. That's the top shield removed, uh, there's a few more things I need to remove before I can take out the motherboard. Uh, I need to remove uh, this connector just here. This is player one's controller input. Uh, I need to remove uh, this connector here. This is player two uh, controller input. And I need to remove this connector here. This is your power and your switch input. Uh, they're just push fitted guys. So you just pull them out and they'll come out fine. Uh, the next things I need to remove uh, is this screw just here, this silver one. And on the opposite side, there's another silver screw I need to remove. I'll remove those and then I'll be able to take out the actual motherboard. 
that's the motherboard removed and the RF modulator uh, inside down is the power board as well contains a bridge rectifier because your input is AC and obviously the system needs DC and there's a bridge rectifier in there smoothing cap and some other components for smoothing and you've also got your main 7805 voltage regulator just there you can see it and that thing has properly gone thermonuclear <laughs> so yeah what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to desolder the old uh, I think faulty <laughs> voltage regulator uh, and then I'm going to carry out some tests on the system uh, just to make sure that it was nothing that happened on the system that caused the voltage regulator to fail so yeah I'll desolder that dodgy <laughs> voltage regulator uh, and then come back before I desolder that 7805 voltage regulator I thought I'd give you a better look at it um, that thing uh, is definitely knackered as we say in the UK <laughs> <laughs> that 7805 voltage regulator has definitely seen better days <laughs> holy <laughs> that's the knackered voltage regulator removed you can see it here uh, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solder some wires into this part here uh, and that will allow me to test the input and the output um, the reason I'm doing that is because obviously I'm filming I can't probe uh, and hold the probes at the same time while I'm filming so it's just going to make my life a little bit easier so I'll solder some wires into here and, and then come back what I've done is I've hooked up some wire now the only reason I've done this is it makes my life a lot easier when I'm filming um, if I wasn't filming this I could just probe uh, with obviously got, having two hands I could probe both the input the output uh, of the input to the voltage regulator and the output to the voltage regulator but obviously because I'm filming I've only got one hand so I can't do that um, so I've hooked up some wire and I'll be able to hook up some probes uh, to this but I'll explain what's going off uh, the center wire here the green one is ground uh, this is the ground going into the voltage regulator and it's basically ground for the system as well this is V in uh, of the voltage regulator so this is the input to the voltage regulator uh, and this is V out so basically the supply the 5 volts out uh, for the system so what I want to do now is I want to make sure I don't have any shorts so I'm going to get my multimeter I'll hook up some probes to this uh, and we'll test that now the first thing I want to check is is there a short and now we're probing the output which would be the 5 volts from the voltage regulator going to the motherboard and I just want to check make sure there's no short actually on the motherboard between ground and the actual uh, regulated 5 volts output and if we take a look at my multimeter you can see we're in the kilo ohms uh, so that would indicate there's no short there uh, so we've, we don't have a short on the output uh, which is a really good sign uh, Now the next thing I want to check uh, is just make sure the bridge rectifier has survived uh, and the easiest way to do that is measure the input voltage for the 7805 voltage regulator so here's our AC coming in um, it will be rectified for a bridge rectifier it will go through some smoothing caps uh, it will then go to the input DC of the 7805 voltage regulator so I put the system back together because obviously I need to power it on now it's not going to fire up because obviously there's no voltage regulator in there but what we'll hopefully see when I power on is we'll see somewhere around about 13 to 15 volts so let's power on and there we go we've got 14 volts happening so DC so yeah that tells me that the uh, bridge rectifier has survived because sometimes when the voltage regulator goes uh, it can take the bridge rectifier but that confirms that we actually do have power coming in through AC it's been rectified it's been smoothed and it's actually 
go into the voltage input pin of the 7805 voltage regulator. So yeah, what I want to do now is we'll actually power this thing using my bench power supply uh, and then see if it works. But the power looks all okay. What I want to do now is actually test the system. Um, now, if you didn't have a bench power supply, um, at this point you could just fit a voltage regulator because you've tested the input to the voltage regulator, you've tested the output, there's no shorts and the voltage regulator is definitely getting power. So you could just pop a 7805 voltage regulator in this thing uh, and test it that way. But uh, I'm a little bit cautious, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bench power supply to actually power the system. Now what I can do then is I can set a current limit. Um, so if this thing starts to pull excess current my power supply will switch the output off. So as you can see I've set it for 5 volts because obviously we're taking the place of the 7805 voltage regulator. I've set the output current for 750 milliamps and I'm going to put over current protection on so if this thing tries to pull more than 750 milliamps uh, it's going to cut out the power supply now I'm first going to try it without gaming because you know if, it, if there is something wrong with this thing still uh, and I put a game in I don't want it to take the game out as well because <laughs> that would be a, a very annoying so uh, yeah moment of truth so let's power on and we're pulling about 350 milliamps and we've got a blinking light guys which is a really good sign that's telling me that the lockout chip is resetting the system because obviously there's no cartridge in there and it can't read the lockout information on the cartridge and if we take a look at my TV hopefully you can see that can you see it flashing every now and again that's the video coming and going because the system is being reset by the lockout chip so yeah that looks promising guys um, what I'm going to do now is let me power off uh, and I'll go and get a game and we'll test it and I've got a NES game in there I've got Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt I've got another copy of this so you know if this one goes bad I've always got another one yeah I'm gonna be annoyed but I've still got another one so I'm still up top uh, let's power on and what do you know there we go it's working I'm gonna go on record and say this guys this is one lucky ness because if the input would have shorted to the output of that voltage regulator this system would have been gone toast this is very very lucky uh, and if you look uh, it's pulling around about 420 milliamps so just under off an amp um, but yeah this thing is very 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 lucky this thing's definitely lost about eight of its nine lives but it does look like it's working so yeah what I'm going to do now uh, is install a new 7805 uh, and then hopefully that's it we've done we've fixed the system it's time to install the new voltage regulator now I don't have any 7805 voltage regulators I do have a 78 SO5 voltage regulator now this one's rated for 2 amps where the original 7805 is rated at 1 amp and the S variant is a 2 amp uh, variant of the 7805 um, now that's not going to be a problem it will work perfectly fine um, also there will be a benefit to that as well this will be slightly cooler in its running temperature because obviously this is designed to run at higher temperatures 
um, than the, the original one amp version. Um, also as well, if I ever want to put a Tim Worthington's um, Ness RGB in this uh, thing, um, this voltage regulator will be uh, capable of handling that. So yeah, I'm gonna upgrade the standard 7805 voltage regulator. I'm gonna put a 78SO5 voltage regulator in there. So yeah, I'll get some thermal paste, lock it on the heat sink, I'll solder it in, uh, and then I'll come back. Our new 78SO5 voltage regulator is in. Got game in, let's power on. Hopefully it should work and there we go. It's working. It's not a bit of Super Mario Bros. So yeah. Uh, it looks like we dodged the bullet there guys. Um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, get the system back together. Uh, and then I can wrap up the video. What I want to talk about is what I think happened uh, to this system. Um, if we take a look at this circuit here, this is the actual power supply circuitry for the actual NES. Um, here's our power brick. Um, you can see we've got 240 volts going in. On this output jack we have 9 volts AC at 1.3 amps. Um, I can tell you right now uh, that power supply is capable of a lot more than 1.3 amps and the reason for that is this is basically a transformer and that's all it is. Um, you can see it comes in here, this is our input, uh, it goes through this bridge rectifier, full bridge rectifier, <laughs> electro broom, love that guy, uh, it goes through a full bridge rectifier, gets rectified to DC. As you can see we've got some smoothing going on. Um, with the circuit, we've got our power switch, we've got more smoothing going on and then we've got the input uh, to the voltage, the 7805 voltage regulator. Now what I think's happened here is the voltage regulator is shorted on its input uh, and that's just caused the, the, the voltage regulator to start putting some crazy amount of current uh, and because of that it's just blue, it's just blue, it's like I can't take it and just bang, gone. Um, now the reason it's done that is if you look there's no protection anywhere there's no fuse to protect the the system um, it's basically uh, just gonna blow the arse at the, the voltage regulator because there's no current protection um, the only thing you're relying on is the current protection you'll get with the bridge rectifier uh, and that ain't going to be enough to to stop a short on the uh, 7805 that thing's just going to explode um, now the reason I've drawn them both in red is for two reasons one if you do get a short to ground on the input here and the 7805 can hold on long enough don't be surprised if your bridge rectifier doesn't get taken out as well so you'll you'll see one or both of them go in our case it was the 7805 it just couldn't take the the current it was pulling and, and just exploded um, but if your 7805 can hold on long enough don't be surprised if it doesn't take out your bridge rectifier as well uh, and that's why you saw me test the uh, input you know I tested I fed the AC into the um, input and I measured here uh, to see what the output was and I was getting round about the 13, 14, 15 volts uh, and that pretty much told me that the the bridge rectifier had survived but yeah if you do get a, an input uh, short on your uh, 7805 uh, and it can survive long enough don't be surprised if your uh, bridge rectifier doesn't get taken out as well so yeah I just wanted to point that out now before I put the lid back on I just want to show you uh, this part is directly above the voltage regulator and you can see uh, where some of the magic smoke uh, has actually gone up to the top of the case. <laughs> and we're all back together. So let's power on the system. And we should get Super Mario and Duck Hunt. And there it is. So yeah. There you go guys blown voltage regulator 
Um, like I mentioned, this system is very, very lucky. Um, it's definitely lost eight of its nine lives because uh, that voltage regula regulator could have easily shorted its input to the output and if it does that uh, this thing the whole system is toast because it would have taken out the PPU the CPU both the RAMs and the lockout chip and the couple of 74 logic series chips on there so yeah now this thing survived and it's very very lucky but yeah there you go guys uh, we repaired it i hope you like the video if you do please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always i'll catch you on the next one winner winner we got a nest <laughs> catch you next time guys